Captain's Log, Stardate 50893.5. Mr. Worf, phases on four the rapid fire spread of torpedoes. Make it so. Woo! Star Trek Ascendancy. Now, I picked this game up. It is very, very big box. <laughs> um, I, I'm not. I wouldn't call myself like a massively hardcore Trekkie, but I do like Star Trek. Um, I got my, you know, my favorite captains. Got my Picard, Kirk, and Cisco. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this Joker unboxed. Really excited. Again, I probably won't be able to fit all of it on screen, but I've already knifed the back of this thing. And let's go ahead and open this thing up. Ah, phasers on full strength. There we go. All right, let's see what we got in this big fat Joker. Ah. Perhaps today is a good day to die. <laughs> I should have known when I opened this box. Something crazy like that would happen. All right, let's take a look. Man, we have tokens galore. Look at that. Oh my goodness. There's several pages of this, if you want to call it that, trays or whatever. Look how many tokens are here. You got warp tokens. You got command tokens. You got production, research, not sure, culture, because, you know, they're, they're written on there. So that's cool. Now, from what I understand, these are your space lanes uh, that you can establish in the game. It's a board that you kind of build as you go. You have ascendancy tokens. Now, that's from what I understand, a, a person who you know gets five of those wins or takes over other home planets. Um, like I say, just done a little bit of research on this. Don't know everything yet, but same same thing here. Cool. So pretty much all the main tokens are on the first page. Okay. Alrighty. So. Star Trek Online, Enterprise, that was, that's the Enterprise, NX-01, I guess, and that, yes, that's the E, I like the E, I, lo I really, I love the Enterprise D, but I really loved it when they upgraded to the E, it was awesome, add a player to your game, uh, we got Romulan Empire, the Romulan Star Empire, uh, Suspicious, Cultural Superiority, whenever you receive a trade agreement, exhaust it immediately, refresh it in the next round's upkeep, as normal and we have cultural superiority take one culture when you complete an advancement picturing a culture token 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 okay now suspicious sounds about right for the Romulans as it is got a really thick really thick rule book um, not as thick as some 28 pages so far uh, looks decent do they have an index or a nice Okay, well, they have a sample first turn. Optional rules. Maintenance. Hey, there's Worf! There is Worf today. It's a good day to die. See, I do know some of the lingo. Anyway, uh, I didn't see an index. Not happy about that, but, you know, we'll figure out how it works. We'll go from there. Uh, we got the Klingons. I like how these look different. Death before dishonor. Klingons may never retreat or surrender a planet. Oh, and I wasn't even looking at this for weapons and shields. Okay, cool. And you have your ever victorious. Take one culture when you defeat three or more ships in battle. I guess you have to get a worthy opponent or what have you. But I like the look of their board there. It's nice. Oh, wait. I hadn't looked at the back of these yet. Oh, okay. The backs are just blank. Yep. Oh, look. The United Federation of Planets. I've always loved that symbol. I always love that symbol. The Prime Directive. The Federation may never invade planets or colonize pre-warp inhabited systems. And weapons upgrades and shields upgrades. Explore strange new worlds. Take one culture when you draw a civilization exploration card or discover a new phenomenon. Nice. And then we have all sorts of uh, Romulan... Well, these are all sorts of ships and stuff. So, not sure what every little detail is. Looks like these may go on the actual, um, what is it, the player board. But you got your Romulan war, bo war boards. War birds here. I do like the detail. These are bigger than I was expecting. Maybe they have smaller versions of these in the thing. I 
Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So there's like maybe, yeah, smaller versions. Maybe that's to, to show a fleet or something. Matter of fact, I'm looking at it now. I must have missed this. This shows different fleets. Fleet 2, so there's got to be a fleet. Yeah, there's a fleet 3 and a fleet 1 over here. Okay, so that's what that's for. And then you have the smaller ones, which again, I mean, they got some pretty good detail on these for what they are. I like. And of course, you have your Klingon ships, but we're going to go ahead and pull a few of these out, or at least one of these. There's a whole bunch of these jokers. That's the, oh, what is the name of that cruiser? I've heard the term, the Volta. Vulture attack cruiser or whatever. That's what that looks like. I don't see any birds of prey in here Necessarily, I know what those look like Unless I'm just mistaken completely, but that's your Klingons Let's take a look at the ba big daddies the Federation Sweet Look at that Enterprise D That's what I'm talking about one of the best ships on screen of any sci-fi ever. <clears throat> I just think of that as just Picard's ship, ultimately. Same thing, got fleet tokens and some bigger versions of those ships. Very nice. Um, I guess these are pedestals. Um, I guess these are, I think, where you put your, your nodes. We'll get into those in a minute. And I think every uh, culture's got them, every... Uh, Faction has those, yeah. See, so the Romulans have those. The Federation has these. Okay. And here are your nodes. Now, I don't remember the names of every one of these. There's a bunch of them in the game. But they're for, like, culture and showing production and things of that nature. So, um, But they look nice. They're translucent. I really like the look of these. And you got the red ones here. Again, not quite sure what they stand for yet. And you got these blue translucent ones. It's very nice. And see, that's what kind of these little node keepers are for, I guess, these pedestals. They hold the nodes and you'd have all three in there if you're able to put all three in there. So, interesting. Okay, that's how that works. But it does show domination or, or whatever you're doing on a planet specifically. Got a bunch of different cards here and, aha, we got unexplored planets. We got your three home worlds, Earth, United Federation of Planets home system. Ah, okay, so culture, research, and production, that's what those three colors are for. If you can see what it says so I guess that's what you generate you get this one starting out with all those nodes on it I'm assuming um, same thing here Klingon Empire Kronos they oh I remember seeing the spelling different I think it starts with a Q and Romulus Romulan Star Empire and we're gonna just take a look at some of these here so we've got Zeta booties Boutis. Open. It says open production. Okay. Um, Valakis 6. Culture production. I wonder if I'm going to recognize any of these. Terra Nova. It does all three. Okay. Tau Sigma 5. Why do I recognize that? I can't think of what that's from. And it also has this symbol. Which looks like it's a danger planet, possibly. I, I don't know. I'm assuming that's a planet that might be dangerous. Sona Prime. I've heard of the Sona. I think I'm from that movie. the One of the Trek movies I've seen. of the new, Not the newer ones, but the, the next gen. Sigma Tama 4. Okay. Sherman's Planet. Don't know that one. Oh, it's got two production on it. Rurapentha. That's got two production and it's got one of those danger looking markers on there. Risa. <laughs> we know all about that one. <laughs> I know all about that if you've watched the show. Janus 6. I cannot remember what that's all about. I, it seems familiar though. Izar. 
Injury 8. Don't know what that one's for. XO3, and it's a danger looking one. Again, I'm assuming that's what that symbol up there is for. Let's take a look at the rest of them. We got an Eagle Nebula, danger symbol, and it's uh, got some. Oh, okay, so you can research the nebula. Okay, okay. Oh, a lot of nebulas here. McAllister Nebula, Phenomenons. Oh, I've been hearing about Phenomenons. Murasaki 312. More research. Neutron Star. We got a Pulsar 2849. I haven't played that game yet, but I've heard a lot about it. Stellar Nursery. Nice. Ardana. Don't know anything about that one. Argo. I've heard of that. I don't know what it's about. Capella. A cappella. I'm going to sing a song. That's a singing planet. Cestus 3. Now, I do know that one. I do know that one. I just can't remember exactly where from. It may have been, um, was it Khan's planet? The one that they, he got exiled to? I forget. Dakala! Delta 4. Now, I do know that one too. Can't remember where it's from. Darn it. Deneb 5. Excalibia. I'm just thinking King Arthur. Excalibur! Sweet. So, those are the planets. Nice. You got some small dice in the game. They do what dice do. And you got a large die with actual numbers instead of pips. I don't see a one on here. Okay. All right. So I got what looks like it might be technology cards here. Got Federation, Romulan, and Klingon. So they all have their own technologies they can develop. Let's take a look at the Federation. So we got <clears throat> Universal Translator. When attempting hegemony, you added one to your die result. Starfleet Command. I'm not going to know what everything is. So I may not read all of them, but Systems Hegemony Resistance is increased by one. Hegemony Resistance. I don't understand that. I guess Hegemony would be if you're dealing with planets and you're trying to get them, coerce them, I guess, or persuade them to join you. Orbital Laboratories during resource generation. Take one research for each star base you control. That's cool. Okay. Bureau of Security. On your turn... You may exhaust this card to exhaust, or you may, yeah, okay, to exhaust another player's espionage advancement. Okay. Tachyon Detection Array. Oh, yes, I know what that is. Just detect Romulans. Long range sensors. Advanced stellar cartography. Transwarp Drive. A powerful engine will be built. An engine that will someday help us to travel 100 times faster than we can today. That's cool. Starfleet Academy, when braving a hazard, your ships have a plus one shield modifier. Chance favors only the prepared mind. Starfleet Diplomatic Corps, yet they're very diplomatic. Class four industrial replicators. Verteron array beam emitter. I know I know about Verteron beams because I've seen the show. Multicultural collaboration, the Cochrane Institute. Your ship's impulse speed is increased by one. That might be even pow powerful. Planets. Planetary Defense Shield. Nice. Cool. And also, the Universal Translator is a starting advancement, according to this. We got the Klingons. Starting advancement, disruptor technology. Your roll, of course it is. Your rolls to hit of six. Always score a hit, regardless of the rival shield modifier. Golly, that's tough. Uh, okay, Klingon High Council. Klingon Battle List. We initiate a space battle and win without taking any casualties. Refresh a command token. Orbital shipyards during your build phase place one free ship at every starbase you control. Combat transporters. When invading a planet, you may re-roll any of your failed to hit oh gosh. To hit rolls. Cult of Kales. Oh boy. R uh, what is that? Adapted cloaking device. Your ships have first strike in space battles during your turn, I bet. That's that Romulan cloaking technology, apparently. Militarized industry. Planetary Bombardment. They are very, they're Klingons. I mean, that's all I have to say. They're, they're just, they're Klingons. They're going to destroy everything in sight. Commandeer and Conscript. Mass Fire Tactics. Forward Munitions Depots. Standing Invasion Orders. Covert Saboteurs. And there's your starting advancement. All right, let's see what else we got. Got Romulan starting one. No, where's the starting one? Oh, okay. Yeah, Romulan cloaking device. Your ships have first strike in space battles. So they start with that. Continuing committee. Your system's hegemony resistance increased by one. Tau Shiar monitoring posts. 
Each time a rival finishes a die roll, a project, roll a die, if the result is equal to or lower than the number of star bases you control, you may add a research token from the supply. To, it sounds like they're going in and, and, you know, spying, it's espionage, spying on what everybody else is getting. Advanced Romulan cloaking device. Rival ships no longer block your ship's movements. Dang. Cloaked orbital mines. Man, these guys are evil. I, I remember they were evil in the show, but man, this is going to be a hard race to fight. Romulan disruptors. Imperial science initiative. Tal Dian security forces. Implantary invasions. Research nodes you control. Roll an additional data hit. Superior shield harmonics. Your fleets may ignore the first casualty in each round of space battles wow superior targeting array superior combat maneuvers multi-spectral emitter drones tal shiar forced quantum singularity drive i remember seeing that that was from yeah uh, uh tng where the time had stopped or what have you orbital defense grid so turn order cards nah they're nothing one two three four and five and whatever we have trade agreements production Productions. Okay, so each race has trade agreements you can set up with other races. I've heard about that. Cool. Okay, so here's your exploration deck. Not going to necessarily hit every little thing in here, but... Ooh, Q! You encounter a member of the Q continuum. The player to your right draws a new system. Connects it to any system from a VS space lane. Move all ships from the system to the new system. Draw another explorer. Wow, so he throws you across. That's kind of similar to what he did to Picard. And... Antidean terrorist plot. I remember that on TNG. Nausicaan pirates. Know about that. Iconian probe. Yes! That's freaking awesome. I remember that too because it implanted all that da data into, well, Data's head. Menthar booby trap. Oh yeah, I remember that too! Asteroid filled with energy draining mines from a long forgotten war. Pay two research or level three hazard. Automated Minosian weapons. Organian intervention. Don't remember. I don't remember that. Neutronic Wavefront. That's from the newer series, I think. Or the, um, what do you call it? Enterprise. I don't remember seeing it, but it looked like that. Crystalline Entity. Yep, Data's enemy. Or Lore's friend. I remember that. Space Amoeba. The Planet Eater. Abandoned Colony. Encounter at far point. Yep. First one of a generation. Gum 2. Oh, yeah, that's right. Iconian Ruins. There's where Data's thing was. Carolina Artifacts. That's a good show. That one's a good good episode. Lost Colony. Player to your right. Places one of the control nodes on the system for free. Binar Technicians. Children of Tama Negotiations. I remember they couldn't, they spoke in weird parable, not parables. It was almost like parables. I don't know. They Jalad and something at Tanagra. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. I love that episode. Orion Trader, the Traveler. I remember him, Wesley Crusher. Will Wheaton's buddy. Gamma Quadrant Artifact Dealer. Pre Warp Level Zero. Pre Warp Level. Oh, okay. So some of these are pre Warp. Warp Capable Level Two. Capable Level Three. Two. Two, lots of these. Lots, I like that there's different artwork on each one of these. That's cool, even though they're the same one, some of them. Level one, level one. Okay, we're getting a bunch of these. Where no one has gone before, discover an untouched planet. Perfect for colonization, virgin planet. Ooh, it's untouched. Man, there's a ton of those, look at that. So that's part of the exploration deck. Now I happen to get a copy of the 50th anniversary cards. That may have to deal with Tribbles and stuff. Dangerous Flora. Tribbles! Exhaust two command tokens, if able. The Game Masters of Triskelion. Okay. The Wrath of Olympus. Lights of Zetar. Bioengineered Wasting Disease. The Guardian of Forever. Talosian Benefactors. Balox Rude. Diplomatic Summit. Secrets of the Horta. Alien Amusement Park. I'm sure they were amused. Pre-warp level zero. Warp capable level three. 
level two. Cool. So, so I realized I didn't go through every little detail on that unboxing. So I wanted to add like an addendum. I missed this. <clears throat> so you got fleet cards, like, you know, and your uh, also your player aid here, which has got your command phases, move, hegemony, invade system, initiate space battle, launch projects, and commission starbase or fleet. And then it tells you all the different costs of each thing that you want to do on your turn. Commit research and this, that, and the other. Then it's got the fleets. Now the Klingons obviously have a bigger, um, you know, fleet card uh, than some of these other ones. They have battle groups. This fleet may re-roll to hit rolls of one in space battles. Marauders take one production for each rival ship destroyed by this fleet and assault. The fleet may re-roll to hit rolls of one in planetary evasions. Now, if you look, you got the Federation one as well. Oh, upside down. And uh, not much difference in terms of everything, just it's kind of more, I like that it's tailored to specifically that faction, you know? I like that, that's really cool. The standard, uh, oh, okay, so there's a battle, okay, so the, that's right, the battle groups are on the back. So you got the battle group here, fleet may re-roll the hit rolls of one in space battles. You have a science group. When this fleet braves a hazard, only roll for one of its ships. This fleet may brave the hazard of a phenomenon they occupy without exhausting a command. You can put four ships on that. And as you notice, the battle groups are a lot smaller than a Klingon's, which makes sense for the Federation. Colonization. On your turn, you may discard a ship from this fleet and disband this fleet to immediately colonize an undeveloped system without spending a culture. That's pretty, pretty good. Battle group, yeah, so we talked about that. Diplomatic. You may re-roll your hegemony roll in systems this fleet occupies. Again, battle group on the back. And then we have the Romulans. And again, uh, like I say, not much difference in terms of that. Just commands and the set and the other. So that's their player aid. And then you got a science fleet. It seems similar to what the, uh, the Federation has. As you can see there. And then uh, they've got a battle group as well, but it's not the same kind of battle group. It's just something you can have an army with, basically, or a fleet with. Battle group. Oh, it's a different battle group. Okay. This fleet may re-roll his. Okay, same thing that's, that the Federation has. Now, that's six. But see, they can get a larger fleet size. The Federation can't do that. <clears throat> so that's interesting. And then they have a mining. When this fleet occupies an undeveloped system or phenomenon, you may use one command to take to production. This may only be used once per turn. Again, a fleet size. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure I caught up and, and actually included that in the unboxing because I missed it the first time through and I realized it after the fact. I don't know how I missed it, but anyway. So that's pretty much the unboxing. I mean, this is a big, massive game. I mean, I can't distress that enough. I can't stress that enough. This is a massive game. Uh, it's going to take us some time to get it reviewed but because we got to play it enough to, to understand it and to talk about it. So anyway, we'll get back to you with a review at some point. Thank you so much for watching The Dice Odyssey. You have a blessed day and make it so. And game away. This video is brought to you by Fallen Dominion Studios. Check out their website at fallendominionstudios.com.